Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Orchard podcast. Um, I am joined with singer songwriter, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Tim Hughes. Uh, good morning, Tim. Good morning. Uh, for those that don't know, Tim is actually married to Rachel. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, Rachel had a little chat with my husband, Johnny. Mm. Um, and I have the privilege today, this morning, to have a little chat with Tim um, and interview him, grill him for everything that he's got. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a chat. You up? Feeling nervous. Yeah, good. You should be. You should be. Amy always um, asks very probing questions. <laughs> nothing, yeah, nothing, I want... No froth with Amy. It's like <laughs> you have to gear up, get ready. <laughs> yeah. Have you got your tissues? Have you got your tissues? Oh, yeah. um, Anyway, as you know, we've been in a, a series, a little podcast series um, around the fruits of the spirit and Galatians 5, and uh, we're coming to the end. Um, and so we are today, we are talking about faithfulness. So the gift, the fruit of the spirit, faithfulness. Um, so we're going to have a little chat about that. And hopefully some things that come out will be helpful, we hope, <laughs> to, to some of you guys that are listening to this. But so, Tim, faithfulness. What is it? What is it? What springs to your mind when you think about faithfulness? Well, I think um, faithfulness is probably one of those words that doesn't feel or seem the most exciting, but actually life would be pretty miserable, chaotic without it. I think there's something in faithfulness of a steadfastness, a consistency, um, a choice to um, daily consistently um choose love choose to prefer the other person it's um mm -hmm. it's something that i think provides an incredible safety net for people to absolutely flourish and um Love that. I'm reminded of a M mother teresa who once said you know we're not called to success but to faithfulness and I think the world often gets obsessed and enamored by success and achievements and, you know, far shiny, impressive things. But actually, I think a life lived faithfully will have an incredible impact. It won't be a flash in the pan, but over years and decades, the, uh, the life and the love and the um, space for others to flourish, I think it will be truly remarkable. Yeah. Gosh, that's good. Good start, Tim. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> I love that. I love that idea of a, that faithfulness offers a safety net for people, mm -hmm. you know, and I, where, where I'd love to hear, like, how, what does that look like? You know, if you think about friendship for a start, like, what does it look like to be a faithful friend? Like, how, how does that even play out in that sense? If you think about friendship particularly. Yeah, well... <clears throat> I think, well, I mean, I, I think maybe it's worth starting before we look at faithfulness within, say, friendship, but it starts, doesn't it, with God's faithfulness towards us. And um, I mean, there's this theme I was just thinking about. Um, well, Proverbs 16, verse 6 says, through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Um, again, Psalm 117 for great is God's love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. This, these themes of love and faithfulness. Now, the thing that for me, in my faith um, is an absolute game changer <clears throat> is that not just simply that God loves me, but that he is also faithful because that means his love can never change. I can't lose it. He won't suddenly decide, oh, today I don't feel that I love you that yeah. actually is completely remarkable you know again that psalm 16 6 that to th this love god's credible compassion and um delight in us over us i mean that that's amazing but that actually he he's made a choice that he'll never ever turn that love away from us that's what brings this complete freedom liberation mm. and, and joy I think about, um, we think about on a human level, I mean, maybe take the example of a covenantal relationship with marriage. You know, I know there are moments where you feel just this intense sense of love towards your, your partner or, or it could be, you know, parent, child or, you know, 
whatever you feel this intense feeling of love but actually yeah. when you marry that with this and I'm going to make choices sacrificial choices day in day out to put you first because there are days um, where you might not feel <laughs> such intense feeling of love or you know what we think <laughs> often is love you might find I mean I'm just thinking about you and Johnny you know you might find you feeling very frustrated with Johnny or you know yeah. he's you up and or I remember Amy when you lived with us and you'd leave your peppermint teacups all over the place and I'd, go there, Tim. I'd, uh, I'd, go there. I'd clean them up <laughs> but you have moments where you can feel frustration but when you have this kind of sense of I've made this choice to try my best ability to be faithful to you as I, said, I think you used the phrase earlier it creates this unbelievable safety net Mm. That means you just, oh, you can bring the worst of yourself. You, you know, with Rach, I'm happy and she has seen the very worst of me and vice versa. And I, I, yeah. I've i had my little crises and, you know, breakdown, whatever with her. And I'm not living in fear that suddenly she's going to look at me and think, oh, you're a bit pathetic or you're a bit of, you know, high, high, high maintenance or you'll know what I thought. And therefore my love for you <laughs> is going to go. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, eternally, we have that in God. And I, I think that is incredible. So I think when we're talking about faith and faithfulness, we need to remind ourselves, like with all these fruits of the Spirit, it's it's a gift. First of all, it's a gift that God is faithful to us. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, like I was, I was talking to a friend yesterday who made some really bad choices and was feeling so full of guilt. And shame, and you know, pray together, for forgiveness, and you know, when, you know, when I'm saying a friend, it, it really is a friend. <laughs> um, and and you know, we prayed, and then it's like because of God's faithfulness, yeah, His word, which is as far as the east is from the west, that's how far He's removed our transgressions from us. You can now move into the rest of the day knowing that yeah. that's dealt with. You don't need to carry that shit. I mean, that is unbelievable yeah. that really is total game changer for us so i think yeah that, that to me is and then, then you ask the question sorry um how well, we can camp there we okay can go camp on. there if you like um because i agree i think you know in some ways that when you understand and grasp the faithfulness of god and his promises on you know that that we are you, he'll never leave us never forsake yeah. us that faithful presence that he has with us um there is just a security isn't there that you don't look side to side you don't want to tear things down but you can offer this safety you can be faithful too can't yeah. you um and so in that then in that sort of um you know in it being a gift and that we talk Rachel and I've talked about this a lot that actually we're it's it's something that we receive but yeah. equally there's an in, there is an intentionality in it too yeah. isn't there yeah. so how do you then you know, with the, with the, um, we receive the truth and this gift of God's faithfulness and everything he's done for us and that we live in that reality. Yeah. How do we, how also do you um, intentionally live in that? Uh, do, is that day by day or how does it look like, what does it look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think it starts by returning to the source, catching a vision for faithfulness understanding god's faithfulness towards us so and i know you know from everyone's looking for the exciting you know easy answer but a lot of this is day-to-day -day connection with god studying the word catching um scripture's view on faithfulness not the world's view on faithfulness because the world's view yeah. on faithfulness is is very much through a selfish lens you know if this marriage isn't working for you move on yeah. if you know if, if you you're this friendship group's not you know a bit boring now and there's something more exciting you know ditch them and it, it, it's very much me centered whereas <clears throat> faithfulness is other people centered it's it's at the detriment of yourself at times yeah of course <laughs> when you pursue faithfulness actually it's incredibly enriching but it, it's saying how can i choose to honor you and love you um and and so you know i think of some of our my f relationships or you know maybe maybe thinking you know we've got five kids and yeah young little baby at the moment and so you know like last mm. night you know two of them are up and it's sort of two in the morning and everything within me screaming you know <laughs> i need to sleep go away yeah you know yeah, yeah. 
um, deal with it yourself. But faithfulness is getting up and trying to be patient, not always getting it right, but thinking actually one of them's teething. So they're a bit, so one of them's a bit anxious. So you, you, you put, put their, you try and see mm. through their eyes and you think, how can I be consistent? How can I be a safe space for them? Um, mm. But that then means you wake up drained and you need to go back to the source, back to God. To, you know, if, if it is this gift that we ask that God yeah. will fill us and help us to see differently, you know, get right with him. Um, and I think it, it's constantly, isn't it, trying to see the bigger picture. Um, I yeah. think this is maybe without looking too much into parenting, but I think that's partly it. And I'm, I'm not very good at this, but this is what Rachel <laughs> drills into. <laughs> it's trying to see it from there point of view and I, I love the fact that a kid that, well at the moment that, um but they just assume will be faithful towards them they're, 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 they're kind of um they they don't doubt particularly when the kids are younger they don't doubt that mum and dad are gonna not yeah through for them um yeah i think the hard thing is is when you grow up you realize no one's perfect and you will be yeah. there but but I, I i think um i guess that empathy that compassion uh is is a drive love is the drive to choose the pathway of of faithfulness you know if you think about a, a sports person it's mm. the goal of winning that tournament winning that championship yeah that's good encourages them mm. to train like crazy to watch what they eat to be faithful in their diet in their ex regime because it, it's for the goal set before them and i guess for us that goal is the love of those people around us and the welfare yeah, of them. yeah. and how because there are two there are two things i think it's like how do we um grow and cultivate our understanding of God's faithfulness toward us because yeah. we've we're, there's a we're all there's so much more that we are that we can understand about his faithfulness towards us or grasp or live in yeah and then and then the other part of it is yeah how do we um grow in the sense of um yeah I guess in some ways a living out this gift or being intentional with us as we partner with God um and so for you how how have you you know I see you and I do I mean although Tim mocks me more than anyone <laughs> in the world I mean you are being so sensible right now Maybe, like, I don't, I, I just, this doesn't ring true <laughs> um Nothing yeah although he does right. yes yeah, mock me more than many I uh <laughs> you are I do I I you know, have so much respect for you and I see you as um as someone who um ha who has grasped you know your intimate relationship with the father your understanding of his faithfulness um and you live in that how have you have you always been like that or have you doubted that he might come through or that he'll be faithful um to something that you've longed for or and how has that how yeah how has that sort of worked out that part of it in your life yeah i i think um i've been thinking about this a lot actually but there, there's this season, uh, late eighties, early mid nineties, where there was an extraordinary outpouring of the spirit. And I remember, you know, 11 years old, and you, you'd, you'd been at the same conference for about five years old, uh, still, in, <laughs> still in nappies. Um, <laughs> but uh, but um, walking into this meeting and experiencing God's presence in worship, I mean, I was, it was, I still kind of remember that moment of a thousand people and the passion and the intimacy mm. and the desire in worship and and then um the sp people invited the spirit to come and outpouring the spirit people crying weeping falling over and it was terrifying because i'd never seen anything like it the sense of god's power was poor yeah but the, um it felt so good and i remember going up being prayed for to see the spirit and you know from 11 years old uh, you know I've never ever looked back I've never of course you have your doubts and you feel disappointment and you carry all of that mm. stuff I've never doubted God uh, and I've always um, I guess something in me around worship really mm. 
kicked off and obviously that's, that's what I've spent a huge amount of my <clears throat> time involved in and we just love spending time in God's presence and I, I, I think that sense of um, um, I think what it is is God God really awakened me that knowledge that we can know him and experience him that he can mm. walk with us that it's not just uh, you know happens on a Sunday in church or in a small group but day to day yeah. that we can be in conversation with him that he wants to lead and guide us that he can do so much more that's been I guess part of the story of my life that God's taken the very small things that I've offered and he's multiplied them he's, he's used them and used some of the things I've been involved in in ways that I could have never ever comprehended and I know that it's not dependent on my gifting or my um, skill set it's just his grace his kindness that gift and so I, th I think for me that has always been such a source of strength and encouragement um, and, and and worship my love for him will always overflow into how I try and live you know I think I think this is Jesus says if you love me you'll obey my commands and you know if you talk about things like holiness which I think faithfulness is kind of being faithful yeah. to God and to others is a, is part of being a holy holy it, it, it so my my choice to try and put him first, uh, say no to things of the world or yes to his plans, is born yeah. out of deep love for him because I love yeah. him. I want to obey his commands, and that's what love does. You know, because I love Rach, I want to choose to be faithful to her, but not just, you know, um, yeah. And by that being faithful, I guess to 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 really see her flourish. Um, and not see her as a support and a helper to me you know so I think um, it's born out of that deep sense of love for God that you you, you begin yeah. to change the way you live and act and I mean yeah. even ex examples um, and to be honest <clears throat> it'd be much better I mean Rachel I think would exemplify faithfulness way way more than me but i, I can think of one moment where mm. uh, we had phoebe and sim rachel was pregnant with lois and i was traveling like crazy i was i was away a huge amount leading worship and you know i was having an absolute blast uh, <laughs> but it was really tough for rachel and we we we, we flew to australia and I was doing, you know, this massive conference, massive event. You know, in terms of, again, the eyes of the world, this was like a really, really exciting mm. deal. Mm. But I remember, you know, Rach was just miserable, really unhappy. And uh, we had, you know, we were having these chats in the hotel. And it's one of those times in a marriage where, you know, it's not just a quick, mm. I'm sorry, let's, you know, it needed some quite radical surgery. <laughs> You're nodding, knowing <laughs> But I remember off the back of that, I realized that, you know, the travel and what I was involved in was diminishing and it was, was detrimental to Rachel's well-being and, and probably the other kids. And so um, I made that decision yeah. to not travel, not take on any invites for a whole year, mm. which felt like, oh, gosh, you know, is, is that going to be the end of my traveling ministry? But then you think, screw it. What, you know, what... That the most important thing and, and the, the one thing on earth that I've made a vow before God to is to love Rachel to put her first you know to death do us part so that to me was um, really important for her sake for our marriage sake for our family's sake but also yeah. it, 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 it was important because it's a way of honoring this vow I'd made before God so it, it all ties back to this sense of yeah. for God yeah yeah, I, I even, even as you're think as you're speaking, okay, it's such a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a loop, it's a circle, isn't it? As we sort of, as we are reminded of His faithfulness, we're able to be faithful to others and all of that. Because I was thinking as as we think about even how you might grow in it. Mm. Um, when I think about my growth in this area, yeah. <clears throat> I um, it's actually um allowing space for god to come through yeah. and i think sometimes even what you were saying about even that sort of you didn't use this word but surrender to his plans to his ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i think is um 
I think is key. And I and as I think about my growth and and my ability to even tell the story of God's faithfulness is because you've said, OK, I'm not going to control this situation. I'm not going to I'm going to give this over to you and trust that you're going to be faithful in it, whatever the outcome, mm -hmm. whether it's the outcome that I want or not. Um, and then you see he always comes through, doesn't he? There's yeah. always, you know, <clears throat> he's always um, he's always working. He's always working for good. He's always bringing good about in situations that we kind of, you know, want the outcome to be something else. But he still brings about good. And I think sometimes we can squash our growth in this area because we don't actually allow him to work in it and then show his faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100% and, and I, I think it's um, Eugene Peterson talks about one of the titles of his book um, you know long obedience in the same direction and I think that's the thing about cultivating it it's with all these fruits of the spirit that they're, they're not flash in the pan they're not kind of yeah. like you know do a quick yeah. three-week course and boom you've got it it's this slow, you know, a, a, a fruit. I love, you know, the image of the fruit, you know, it starts with a tiny seed and, you know, we mm. did some strawberries and, you know, you part of the seed and then you watch each day what's happening. And it's, it's yeah. a slow for, 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 for kids. It's like, ah, well, it was taking forever. And I think that's, we've got to be thinking, having like this long-term view of day in, day out, um, being open, being accountable. I, th I think, um, these gifts, they outwork best, I think, how God designed it in community, in people, because actually it's in, a, in relationships where like this mirror is sh shown and you realize, gosh, I'm not, I'm not behaving in a way that's honoring or faithful or gentle yeah. or self-controlled or whatever it, it, it is. And I think that's yeah. the other thing we've got to, um, I, I'm, I'm more and more, amazed at sometimes the lack of self-awareness people have yeah. themselves and but then I, I think gosh that's in me but it's times where a friend a really good friend sits you down and says do you know that really hurt or I've just noticed this in you and and you think oh my goodness gosh yeah there are, there are these things that I need to repent get right before God but also address I, I think sometimes the frenetic pace with which we've lived yeah makes it very hard for these fruits to really grow um mm. Mm. so so i i think this kind of self-reflection is really important i mean i haven't done it so much of late but i used to do um these kind of four like reflection you know um you know almost like an examine at the end of every day Actually, no, yeah. I, I do at the start of the day, reflecting back on the previous 24 hours, and it was um, replay just to process through the day and really helpful to process where I felt life and joy, where I felt hurt and despair and anger. Um, <clears throat> secondly, to rejoice, to choose what was good, because I think, again, mm. that's really important. It's, it's a thing of worship. God, you give me this, and that was... Um, then repent. To, to get right before God. I think confession is a lost art for many people. We, we don't do that, gosh. And even on the small things, again, yeah. the danger with sin isn't that we tolerate it. Well, you know, we, we describe it as, well, I, I was tired, it's a weak moment. It was, no, 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 it was it's sin, that harsh word spoken, that mm. um, thing you watched, all that lie you aligned yourself with, it's, it's sin. Um, yeah. And then the fourth is um, reboot. You know, what 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 can I learn? What can I try and do differently? What can I shift to to enable me in my life to outwork whether it's faithfulness or love, joy, peace, whatever they are? Um, <clears throat> I found that really really helpful because I think sometimes we just whiz through life and we don't stop to take measure and to look at what really is going on, what really is the state of our hearts, um, and allow God in. Um, yeah. To, to yeah. Help develop and cultivate those things. Yeah, I agree. And I think part of all of these fruits, isn't it, is a is a life given over, isn't it? It's like say I'm you know, each day, I know for me every morning, it's like <laughs> I need your like Holy Spirit, come fill me up. You yeah. know, simply. Like I need the fruit of your spirit um in my everyday. Um 
And so it's sort of even at the beginning of anything, it's like, Lord, yeah. you know, Holy Spirit, fill me. I need your I need your fruit. I need your um, your wisdom or whatever it is um, in a situation. So I think it is. Um, it, yeah, I think you need to have uh, those moments of quiet and stillness, even if it's for a few moments to reorientate yourself um, and be dependent always yes. i think um because when it's so easy to whiz up and control and to you know fix everything ourselves when actually we miss out that's what i was trying to say yeah. i think we miss out on seeing more of god in our lives because we're not willing to just let go and allow him to work yes. um through our situations i think a hundred percent and and isn't it you realize to think specifically about the faithfulness that's something that drives you through really tough time yeah. and actually yeah. i think it's one of those gifts that when you move through tough times it it deepens and you know if faithfulness is a bit like an anchor for the soul yeah. an anchor in you know for the ship it kind of just steadies things and i, I think of with our team at gas street um there have been some moments um where we've walked through some really painful things restructures or mm. um you know this is where everyone perhaps sees things differently you know we're all, we're all agreed on the big thing you know jesus lord um, <laughs> but then how how kids work's going to be outworked or the style of worship or um someone's got a passion for this and we're not quite sure how it all fits together you know all egos personalities mm. it, it, it's a melting pot for her misunderstanding and difficulty and, and actually we've at times had really painful moments and conversations with people in our team and they've been hurt by us and we've been hurt by them but actually mm. you choose to commit to one another you choose to mm. have those painful conversations you choose and you contend for friendship and you, you, you mm. keep on towards this goal of seeing god's kingdom come for us here in birmingham and actually you, you move through and it, it deepens your yeah. community, the community deep it creates even a safer space for more vulnerability and and i mean my hope is <clears throat> you know in decades to come there's a whole bunch we will have just journeyed through so much together and it's just there's that knowing and understanding mm. and, and grace for one another because yeah. i think it just produces this um i think again with faithfulness it doesn't work if it's matched with this pressure to perform I, there's yeah. this kind of sense do you know what i love you i'm for you i know where you're yeah. brilliant and i know where you're not and you know where i'm brilliant you know where i'm not but there's just a grace for one another and yeah. i'm not going to hold you on a short leash and be easily offended by you and it, it's it's a i think it's a beautiful thing for for communities to have those friends where you just know and yeah. for each other and, and but that that's built by going through the storms yeah and, so we've and got... it's built by knowing that jesus is that for us isn't he and i like you were right back to the beginning and i think you know it, when i think about friendship um mm -hmm. i've actually i've been so like really crying so much recently about anything to do with the father's heart or yeah. god's mercy you know yeah. particularly anything i and if, even a song, like I was watching The Little Mermaid the other day, like sobbing because King Triton made her, you know, tail into feet because she wanted to, you know. Well, well, kids like, watching you like, oh gosh, here she goes again. <laughs> um, but I think it's this radical, I think what gets me is this sort of radical grace, this radical faithfulness, this radical kindness when we run away, don't we, so much of the time. And yet he's still always there whenever we want to, you know, whenever um you know we've think we've run too far away he's there you know we turn back and he's there um and uh, and i just think the more we un we yeah, the more we grasp that he is never going to let us go yeah. and there's nothing we can do that will stop us um you know well yeah nothing can stop us from the love of god that's in christ jesus um i just think that what an we actually as as ones who are able to and to grasp that and obviously that's a lifelong journey there is an embodiment of faithfulness that we can show the world isn't there yeah. and i and i've seen that outplay in friendships recently around that um idea that 
you know, when you can tell that someone want is put a defense up yeah. or wants to run away or wants to escape from something or it's all getting too intense or whatever. Um, there is a, because of, because of what I know Jesus does for me, yeah. I don't, I don't also run away. I stay put. And that's a little bit what you're saying with your, your team, even that actually we're going to, we're going to stay faithful to this, yeah. even yeah. through those hard times when we want to run away because Jesus never runs away from us. Um, and so I think that there is, go on. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I've been thinking a bit about the story of Hosea. Who, yeah. He marries uh, Goma, um, who's an adulterer, has all these affairs, has all these other children behind his back. And then she's sold into slavery and, and then uh, God says, you know, buy her back and, you know, call her back and, and go again. Yeah. As well. and, and, and you're reading this and to be honest, part of me thinking, what, a, what an idiot, you know, like she's being unfaithful, <laughs> ditch her, you know, move Hello. on, you, you, you know, you're worth it, you know, you're better than <laughs> that, you know, come on, buddy, you know, stand up for yourself, you know, ditch, you know, all of this stuff, that's, and so you're feeling like this. Wow, what a, what a yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy thing to do. That level of unfaithfulness, um, emasculate all of that. And then you realize God calls him to do that to demonstrate what God does to mm. us as his people. I love people, it. Their horrendous unfaithfulness. And you suddenly think, oh my goodness, that's me. I'm the unfaithful one. I'm the goma. I'm the one who's. Yeah just turning my back again and again on God and God keeps coming back to make it right between us. And, and that's remarkable. And, and when you, you catch that, yeah, it, it gives you, I think, grace to, I agree. okay, well, I want to, I want to be that for others. Um, yeah. But, it, yeah. It, it, but it, it, it's not easy. Yeah. And it takes, like you said, it takes that self reflection to be okay with saying I'm a sinner mm. and I've been redeemed and I am being redeemed and will be <laughs> redeemed. Um, you know, and I think that actually it takes, the, it takes humility to, yeah. to be dependent upon God in this sense, I think. Yeah. Um, so we could go on and on, but I think we've, um, I think, is there anything that's burning in you, Tim? Um, the, the only other thing, I was just thinking of that, um, as you're speaking, another proverb 27 verse 6 faithful are the wounds of a friend yeah and i think it's that just that how these the soil in which a lot of this stuff is born is is community because it is those challenges those you know speaking into people's lives that feels really at times costly and hard to do but it actually it produces some of this fruit that we're talking about um, yeah, and, and you know, Amy, you and Johnny have incredibly been that for Rachel and I, and, and mm. um, it, it, it's a real gift when you you have that. Um, and it's a it's a thing about the church. I mean, what a vision for the church to be community yeah. where we can love and be faithful to one another. We can challenge and spur one another on to greater things. We can yeah. weep when people are weeping. We can rejoice when they're rejoicing. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, I think, a massive challenge that churches, they become more of that rather than great events on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I love that. I know you love the big event, don't you, on a Sunday? And yeah, I love it. All, all the outfits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all the glam and the glitz. Oh, gosh, yeah. I don't know how you the guys green are. room, I need oh, the, you know. Oh, so, yeah. um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think it's the safe. I just think it's also the the place of growth, isn't it? Yeah. That if we a community that is faithful to each other through, through you know good and bad as God is to us, um, mm. then it's a place where yeah, like imagine the church being a place where it's the safety net. Not it's yeah. not the ultimate safety net, but it's embodiment yeah. of God's safety net that we can grow and flourish and make mistakes and it be okay and. Yeah. You know, uh, because the, like you're saying, the, it's so different in our culture, in our society right now, isn't it? You make one bad move and you're gone, you're cancelled, you're rejected, you're, you know, you're out. Um, what a prophetic witness we can have. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking of another little example. Um, I remember when I was young, starting to lead worship, would feel um, really anxious, really like, this is my one moment. And I was working with Mike Pilavachi, and if I, that's as far as thinking, if I lead great, I might get another bigger opportunity. If I lead badly, that's it, out, out of the game. It's like, you know, yeah. or something, you know, you die, you're out. And I remember Mike saying, Tim, I'm committed to you. You're going to be leading worship for years and years and years. Chill out. Ugh. And, uh, and it, 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 it created that space, his faithfulness to me, his commitment Absolutely. to me, the space to grow. And I think more and more, maybe this is in the work context of business or church, if there's people you believe in, yeah, you say, look, I'm for you. Take the pressure off yourself. You know, if you screw up, you know, we'll get going again. And I'm committed to see you develop. And, and yeah, I wouldn't be doing what I, I'm doing today were it not for Mike's commitment to me. So, and, and that, that gets me excited that we can do that. I can do that for others. And I imagine on my sort of, you know, 18 years old on a rocking chair, seeing all these people doing these amazing Ugh. things and just thinking, do you know yeah. what? I was able to just pour a bit of fuel on that fire at some point in their lives. I think would bring me huge joy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, I am. Um, we're going to, we're going to, uh, well, you know, Rachel and I normally pray at the end. Yeah. Um, right. But I, you know, thought I would change it around a bit. Yeah. Given Rachel's not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, she's lying. Hey, by the way, up. go on, say. She's lying out in the sun while I sort of just trying to keep <laughs> the kids tidy the kitchen. The kids are all, you know, being carefully occupied. And, you know. Oh, you're a hero. You're a hero, <laughs> aren't you? Um, so why I was thinking, um, I know that one of the you've got your favorite song is all around is faithful, is faithful one. Yeah. I believe. Yes. Is it your favorite song or is that no, it, it is actually very good knowledge. No. I very yeah. good. Um, so I was thinking that um, instead of praying, or I'll, you know, we'll say a short prayer, but I would love it if you wouldn't mind, given mm. that you've got an angel voice, Tim, <laughs> <laughs> um, which you have, um, if you could sing that over us. And so I just yeah. encourage if you're listening to this, um, then why don't you just take a moment be still or close your eyes and um and just even in this moment let's be reminded of god's faithfulness to us and um it might be that you in this moment even that you um think of a, a think of a time when you know have known god's faithfulness towards you um and let's lead it you know sort of let it be a moment of reflection um as we remember how utterly amazing and gracious God is. Um, so I'll pray. Holy Spirit, we um, thank you for this time. And we just ask, um, Lord, that anything that has been spoken um, that is of you, and we just pray that now you would, um, would you just, I pray it would be seeds that go deep and that you would um, help us. Would you help us to um, be a faithful people would you help us to be faithful in our obedience to you faithful in friendships faithful in all relationships and ultimately would you help us to live faithful lives um, as we remember how faithful you are to us in jesus name feel free to be the amy <laughs> i knew you were going to say that <laughs> faith so unchanging Ageless one You're my rock of peace Lord of all I depend I call out to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in time of trouble. 
Thanks, Tim. Hadn't had hadn't had time to warm up, but uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to be with you, Amy. Thank you for thank you so time. much. What a what a treat! What a privilege! More to come. <laughs> thank you.